The glory of God. Here I stand this is the before first you, before your throne of heart portion of opening up find the glory help of God. Of need to seek your love now, as I discussed in the introduction, glory is kavod, and it means weight, good sense, splendor, uh, honor, copiousness. I'm going to read from some very crucial scriptures in Exodus discussing the glory of God. Exodus 16, 10. And it came to pass, as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Now, as I said before, the basic definition of of the glory of God is that it is the breaking through from the supernatural realm into the temporal realm of the divine presence of the Lord. The glory of the Lord covers the earth. That's a, a manifestation of his creation. But his presence and the demonstration of that is what we are going to be discussing here. Let's look at Exodus 33, 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, you came not to see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and you shall stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus 33, 7 through 23. Now let's look at the words in this particular passage of the glory of God. And what is God trying to say here? He says, Moses took the tabernacle, okay? The tabernacle is ohel, it's a type of a tent. And he pitched it without the camp. And I'm sorry, it's verse 13. Now, I pray you. If I have found grace, Moses, Moses says, grace is chane, it's kindness or favor. Um, if you favor me in your sight, show me now your glory. The way that I may know, Derek, the road that I may know that I may find grace. And as we said before, grace is favor in your sight. And consider that this nation is my, your people here. Now this is when, after Moses obviously had taken the Hebrews and out of Egypt, and they were in the wilderness, and God was beginning to establish his divine presence with his people. And he said to you, if your presence go not with me, carry us not thence. For where shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in your sight if you don't go with us? In other words, his presence, so shall we be separate, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found grace, favor in my sight, and I know you by your name. And he said, Moses said to him, I, I beseech you, show me your glory, your kavod, your weight, your splendor. 
And he said, I will make all of my goodness. All right, this is an aspect of God's glory. Um, his beauty, his welfare, all of, of who God is. Pass before you and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious. God says, I will give favor and bestow favor on whom I will be gracious. And I will show Rachem. I will have compassion and love and show mercy, compassion and love on whom I will show mercy. They say, can you not? But you cannot see my face. For no man shall see me and live. And behold, there is a place by me and they shall stand upon this rock. Sur, Hatsur. And this is what happens in Hanukkah. This rock symbolizes, and there's many, many uh, allusions to Jesus as the rock. And no one could see God because in our sinful fallen state, God must, his holiness, his destroys corruption. Therefore, Moses ha had to be hidden in the rock. And uh, now that we have Hatsor, the rock of our salvation, Jesus' blood covers our sins and makes atonement for our sins that we might come in to God's presence in this age. But at the time of Moses' tabernacle and, and the preparing to have God's presence come into the tabernacle and in the midst of the people, there was another set of ordinations that the 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 tabernacle of Moses spoke of the pattern of heaven, which is stated in Hebrews. And it was a sign and a type of things to come and that which is heavenly. And then God says, uh, and then it says in the book, it says that it shall come to pass while my kavod, my glory passes by, that I shall hide you in the cliff, in the split of the rock, and will cover you with my hand. The, is, this, this is kaf, it's the hollow of the hand, as, as though it's, it's putting the person in the hollow of their hand while I pass by, and I will make my hand, and when I take away my hand, you shall see my back, as a chor, the back, backward part, the back side, but my face... The face is the part that turns, this panim, the, the part that turns, that turns away, shall not, it, his face will be turned away. You shall not see, raha, to see. You will not see my face because he would not live. This passage, Exodus 33, is... When Moses was preparing to leave the Sinai and met with the Lord, and he asked that God's presence will go with him, and he wanted to see his glory, which is an aspect, the manifest presence of God, and he was requesting that it be with the people in, uh, in the nation, that the other nations might know, that the other nations might know, that they are the people of God and they are separate from all the other peoples who are upon the face of the Lord. And God said he would. But these aspects, he can't see God's face at this time. Though he was hidden in the rock and he, he couldn't see God's face and live. And then God showed him his backside, his goodness, his mercy and his compassion, his favor on whom God decides to show his mercy and his choice of people. Now, Exodus 34 uh, made new tablets because the people of Israel had rebelled when he went up to Mount Sinai the first time and they worshipped a golden calf and uh, were stiff-necked and had iniquity and went into sexual immorality. Therefore, Moses renewed, or God required that Moses come and renew the covenant with God. 
And when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, it says that his face was shining with the glory of God. He had a shining on him, and he put a veil over his face so that it would cover him. And then in Exodus 35, the Sabbath regulations and the tabernacle offerings and the articles for the tabernacles were being laid out, and the artists were called, and then people were called to give to build the temple. And the Ark of the Testimony was made, and the showbread, the gold lampstand, the altar of incense, the anointing oils and incense, the altar of burnt offering, the bronze laver, and then the mishkan, the tent or the tabernacle, the making of the court, and the materials for the tabernacle, and the making of the garments, and the ephod, the breastplates, the priestly garments. And once the work was completed, and as we shall see later, and these are ex Kevin Connor does great studies on these, that as it says in uh, Hebrews, these are all reflections of the pattern of heaven and they are for sign and a type and they speak to us about certain issues in this age we have become the tabernacle and as we have certain purposes and gifts and callings they are reflected in the tabernacle articles and it is Exodus 40, the tabernacle then becomes to be erected and arranged. These are put in order by God's commands. You cannot build without the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. You cannot build the temple of God, the tabernacle of God, the people that we are, that his glory may come and reside in us with by doing it uh, for your own ministry or your own way. It must be done according to God's plan and submission to his obedience. Shema needs to be over you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and strength and mind. This is the commandment. Exodus 40 proceeds to talk about the pattern, the pattern of the tab tabernacle, how it's laid out. And there is a pattern that God has called from the foundations of the earth certain people and caught giftings and orchestrated them to build or serve in his, serve him, and that the glory of the Lord will be, his presence will be, uh, we will become the filled with his glory and his glory will come. So Moses finished the work in Exodus 40, 33. And then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting. Because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all all their journeys this is the divine leading by the presence of the lord the cloud by day that's a, a a physical manifestation of the divine supernatural presence and the fire the energy and the mist that 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 works and the people did not move until the cloud moved and they were led by the spirit in all their journey. Now Exodus is the book of exiting, leaving Egypt in the wilderness, being in the wilderness. The third book, Leviticus, is the guidebook showing the people how to worship, serve, and obey a holy God. It's a book of instruction. Man in his fallen nature does not know how to, to worship, serve, and obey a holy God. He will build altars and religious sacrifices and everything else. 
that become idolatrous without the instruction and discipline of the Lord God. Then fellowship with God through sacrifice and obedience, through listening and obeying, show the awesome holiness of God. For indeed, it says in Leviticus 19.2, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. And without holiness, no one shall see God. Why? Because you will die. When you, you cannot see God and live unless you are holy. That's why Moses was covered. And we are now uh, uh, Leviticus and also us are kings and priests. And we are to worship and walk as a nation of God, as kings and priests. A holy nation. And we are to fulfill that calling and carry the ark of his testimony upon our shoulders that others may know and see the divine fire of God's presence, his glory, and come to him to bring the nations to, uh, to God. So Leviticus goes into all the offerings, which these are instructions about how really sinful and fallen we are. That we don't even see it because God is holy and we can't see. Uh, we see through our own fallen understanding. And God must instruct us. Peace offerings, uh, fire, profane fires, the foods permitted and forbidden, the laws concerning the people and the government. So this is government. It's not just how the order of service was set up. But it is the laws of government and sexual morality, moral and ceremonial laws, the penalties for breaking the law. And look, God said, I am the Lord. I change not in Malachi. Then it proceeds to go into the Feast of the Lords and the seventh, the care of the, the, uh, the articles, the penalties for blasphemy. The Shabbats, the year of the Sabbath of Sabbath, the year of Jubilees, uh, redemption, slavery, all of these laws. The, and then the, in Leviticus 26, the promise of blessing and retribution. What will happen if you break God's laws? Numbers, then, is the wanderings in the wilderness. And this really is, symbolizes, it's an allegory of the life of this, this particular dimension that we're in, about the genealogies and um, the duties of the, some of the uh, people in the tribes, the law of the Nazareth, the Nazarite, the offerings. And then the Passovers, the cloud and the fire, and the trumpets, the elders, the, the government, and then um, the entering into the promises of God, and entering into Canaan land, the promised land, and the giants that are there. And the process that God takes us through in dealing with and bringing his people into the fullness of training. So this life is a life of discipline, training, instruction, obedience, following the Lord. And it has to be done his way. We cannot do it our way or the way we think it should be done because we are fallen. And we have to understand, as in any relationship, I have to get to know you to understand what you require. What does the Lord require of thee, O man, that you walk humbly with the Lord your God? That you love mercy. And that you love justice. These are important. These are not aspects that we naturally have, but they are trained and disciplined in us. Number 14, 
20. Again, we will talk about the glory. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They shall certainly not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who reject me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now this is an interesting passage because here God says Moses is interceding for the rebellion and disobedience of the people ten times, God says. But if they have rejected me then and, and do not heed God's voice, they will not see the promised land. You, you cannot despise the gifts and callings of God. You cannot continue to reject the Holy Spirit and trample the blood of Jesus. You, there will be no place left for repentance for you to enter in to the promises of God. But there are those who have a different spirit and will follow him fully, as in Caleb. The, those will enter into the land. And this is, this is because God has clearly demonstrated and opened up his glory and his counsel and his ways. Not just his, his will, but his ways, how he wants it done. And in the book of Deuteronomy, let me give you an overview of the book of Deuteronomy of Moses. It is like Leviticus. It has a, a great deal of legal detail. Uh, for everyone the, um, and it emphasizes the importance of obedience otherwise they will be examples and be left their carcasses in the wilderness dead to rot this is how to enter in to the promises of the inheritance of God the internal inheritance by instruction and example uh, these are the words and this is um the, the dilating of the original laws. Now leaders were appointed. Then Israel refused to enter into the promised land. It stayed out in the desert for 40 years. Then as they entered in, the giants were here. The Anakim, the king of Sihon, the king of Og of Bashan and Heshbon. But Moses was forbidden to enter the promised land because he struck the rock uh, when he was supposed to speak to the rock in his own anger. And then Moses commands obedience. What nation, great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are written in all this law which I set before yourself? Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. And teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of the heaven, with darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, which the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. And that land is eternal. It's not just temporal, all the days of your life, but it's the eternal, lest you end up in hell burning forever and torment. Then it goes on to say, Beware of idolatry. 
And then in Deuteronomy 5, the Ten Commandments are reviewed, which I will say here, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall work and do all your work, but the seventh day is your Sabbath of the Lord your God. And you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand, and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long, and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his male servant, his female servant or his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. These words the Lord spoke to all the assembly in the mountain, from the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness with a loud voice. And he added no more, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And the people were afraid of God's presence because it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was burning with fire that you came near to me all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Surely the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God speaks with man, yet he still lives. And the greatest commandment, what is the greatest commandment? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments, which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all of his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful, Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the Lord is one. Be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. A land flowing with milk and honey. Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Hear, O Israel, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Your heart is the altar of worship in your tabernacle, your temple, your body. And these words shall be in your heart and you shall teach them to your children. This is the commandment of God. Now, and then there's cautions against disobedience and the blessings of obedience and remembering who God is. And then a reviewing of God's rebellion and the second commandments, how love and obedience is rewarded to beware of false gods and the punishment of apostates, then to go on to tithing principles and the law and the Passover. 
wicked cousin customs, um, not not marrying the foreign gods. I mean the foreigners because the 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 worship of uh, idols will come in to the nation. Uh, inheritance rights, ties, blessings, the renewing of the covenant, and the blessings of turn, returning to the Lord. When you may, uh, and this is, it, it comes to pass that when you come into all these uh, blessings or cursing that you're choosing life or death, you are choosing, if you obey God and love him, life and life eternal. And if you choose to Reject him, you are choosing death and eternal uh, judgment in the burning fires of hell. Then the law is to be read every seven years. And then the Song of Moses is there, which is also referred to in the book of Revelation as the Song of the Lamb and the Song of Moses. Those who follow the Lamb, those are the ones who, who, who um, overcome. And then, as we continue to proceed, let me say in Deuteronomy 5.24, And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen that God does talk with man and he lives. Now, why should you die? Why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fires we have and lived? And God has spoken, and you must hear and live. Then in Deuteronomy 33, Moses uh, puts, continues with his blessings of the tribes. And in Exodus 34, he dies at Mount Nebo and the plains of Moab. And I'm going to go to verse 7. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dimmed, nor his natural vigor diminished. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid hands on him, so the children of Israel heeded him. And did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since there ha then there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, before Pharaoh, before all his servants, and in all his land, and by all that mighty power, and all that great tower which Moses performed in the sight of all of Israel. And I want to add that that is at the Lord's command and bidding. And God backed him up because he was obedient. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up to the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Psalm 24.